Well, good afternoon, folks. This is Dr. William Curtis. I'm here at Future Focus Family Medicine. I uh, had a little live event we were going to do today. I have uh, never done one of these through Facebook, done a lot of live events in the clinic. And uh, it had been dawning on me that there's a lot of common questions that we get asked every day in the clinic that seem to be, uh, they're so common that I think it's best to probably use social media like this to start talking about them and maybe maybe help uh, answer some of those questions that, you know, maybe keep you out of the doctor's office. One of the things we want to talk about today is quality fats. Um, there's a lot of contro controversy about fats, um, especially in the United States. Uh, for the last 40 years, we've been all, all been taught that, uh, you know, fats are bad for you, especially saturated fats. And I think there's this mounting evidence that that's not true necessarily. Um, and I'll kind of get into some details of why I think that's the case. Um, in particular, um, I think that quality fats, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example of a few of what those might be, quality fats are terribly important for things like weight loss, for people that have inflammation, um, you know, things like arthritis and joint pain and that type of thing. I think it's terribly important for diabetics, and I know that's a little controversial, but I've got a lot of experience treating diabetics with uh, uh, diets that are specifically uh, allow quality fats. Uh, and I think there's a big reason that a lot of people need to know about this. And I'll make a comment that I think a lot of reasons that there's controversy in diet. For instance, I had the reason I'm doing this is I have patients every day that, Doc, I heard fat's bad for me. I heard, you know, I, I can't do that. My cardiologist is not to. I think that the reason you see so much controversy is that the truth is, Although we are all very similar, there's probably a variety of diets that work well for people. But one of the things we're really finding out is that simple sugars are not your friend. Okay, that's, that's becoming overwhelmingly, it's, it's associated with all kinds of medical problems, including inflammation, uh, autoimmune disorders, of course, diabetes. I mean, the United States has a, a, an obesity epidemic, and it is being driven by macro food types like carbohydrates that cause obesity. Um, and, and I guess we can cover that. It's, uh, it's, this is mainly going to be about fats and what a quality fat is, but at the same time, we have to touch on some of the other macros or it doesn't make sense in, in context. So I hope uh, this will be helpful for everyone as I go through this, okay? Um, so I guess why should we care about fats? Um, uh, and when I'm, I'm talking about some some real um, quality fats. Um, uh, these would be, uh, I'm not talking about trans fats like you would get in potato chips or things like that, but fats are building blocks of nearly every tissue in your body. For instance, uh, the lining of all of your nervous system, uh, there's a good portion of your brain and the central nervous system that is made in part from fat. Um, Fat also uh, is a source of many key fat-soluble vitamins. Uh, and so if you don't have quality fats in the diet, and a lot of people are deficient, you, you, will, you can develop actual deficiency syndromes from these, uh, from not having enough in your diet. Fat is associated with cholesterol in some instances. They're not identical. They're not the same thing. Cholesterol and fat is not the same thing, but many foods that have fat also have cholesterol. And uh, cholesterol is the chassis. It's, it's like the, if you were building cars and that's that you're out, one end of the factory is going to be a car, you have to have a chassis at the, at the beginning, a raw product that you're going to build onto. That's like cholesterol. So you can take cholesterol and you can add little parts to the outside of it, different widgets on the side of it, and it might become estrogen, it might become cortisol, which is your stress hormone, it might become testosterone, progesterone, and any number of adrenal thyroid or endocrine hormones. So that's really fascinating that we use something that's supposedly a disease, high cholesterol. We, we actually, it's a normal building block in the body. So just be aware, fats are often associated with cholesterol, uh, not identical. Uh, cholesterol is a protein, uh, fat is different. Um, so I mentioned central nervous system repair. Also, um, very, very important, fats are very important for helping us with um, sugar cravings. Um, and I think, and, and also in weight loss, and I'll get a little bit into why that is. So should you have them in your diet? Absolutely, yes. The answer is yes. They will help you lose weight, and one of the ways they help is by controlling cravings. Uh, 
Um, you know, anybody that I've talked to, one of my patients knows that if, I'm, if I want you to lose weight, I'm going to ask you to be off of processed sugar. That means grains, cereals, bread, uh, of course, cakes, pastries, pan dulces, and the worst ones the, are the liquid, uh, the calorie, uh, sugar calories. So this would be beer, uh, alcohols, and sodas, even diet sodas. By the way, for those that are thinking about diet sodas, um, aspartame has been shown to be more addicting than crack cocaine in lab animals. It also causes carbohydrate cravings in humans. So if you're trying to lose weight, improve diabetic control, uh, you know, get a hold of food cravings and that type of thing, you most certainly uh, want to avoid simple, uh, simple sugars and you want to avoid artificial sweeteners. Um, so if we're trying to lose weight, so we're talking about dietary fats, but if you were trying to lose body fat, you have to understand how the body works. Simple sugars like carbohydrates, the ones I just mentioned you should avoid, they trigger uh, and control how our body handles body fat. So if you're trying to lose weight, it is very key that you understand how the role carbohydrates play in, in losing weight. Carbohydrates control how we handle uh, body fat. So when you eat a carbohydrate, let's say you have a, a big pile of french fries, pure sugar, pure carbs, um, that naturally will raise, as your body absorbs it, your sugar spikes in your bloodstream, and your insulin comes in from your pancreas and lowers the blood sugar, because that's it's too high, the body tries to regulate that. And when that happens, you will, you will store that, that energy, that sugar, as fat. It gets converted to fat. So eating sugar and carbohydrates is actually what causes us to store fat. It also changes how fast we will burn fat. And that is the basis of ketogenic diets, which I know I saw somebody said they love keto. Well, I talked about that a lot. Okay, so, so ketogenic diet is a low carbohydrate, higher fat diet. And I often will use that as a tool for certain people. So, um, so let's, let's go ahead and talk about what a quality fat is. Um, and I'm gonna put a couple links before I'm done. I'll put a couple links in the uh, bottom of the post down here that cover uh, there's one that's an article I wrote on quality fats. You can go through each of these in great detail. I don't want to keep this video too long. But key ones that I like are eggs, avocados, coconut oil, extra virgin olive oil, fatty fish, such as maybe salmon, um, things like that, nuts, uh, especially mixed nuts, uh, chia seeds, full, uh, full fat cheese, full fat yogurt, um, and, and even dark chocolate. Dark chocolate always surprises people, but dark chocolate is not very really high in sugar. It's actually about 70, 65 to 70% fat, so uh, saturated fat. So it's, it's one of the sources of fat that, um, you know, kind of, I guess it's a little dessert-like, if you will, but it actually doesn't have a tremendous amount of sugar in it. So think about those. And there's others, um, you know, I didn't mention, you know, whole dairy and things like that. And the reason it's not in my favorite list, although I put yogurt, is because some of those, uh, a lot of people are sensitive to dairy. A lot of people are allergic to dairy. And so I'm, I'm cautious with that recommendation. Although from a pure, is it a fat standpoint? Yes, and there's nothing wrong with it. From an allergy standpoint, some people don't tolerate dairy very well. So um, what about meat? Uh, yes, meat has fat and there are good saturated fats in meat. Um, obviously fish is an easy source. Uh, Grass-fed beef, pastured poultry, wild caught salmon, things like that. These are all things that I think are beneficial for the types of fats that they have. Now I said grass-fed beef specifically. Uh, I'm not gonna get into it in great detail, but I will tell you that if you do look at research on grass-fed versus grain-fed cows, cows were not meant to eat grain, makes them fat, uh, and uh, just like it does us actually. And, and so what ends up happening is the, the fat is of different quality in the meat. And so it does matter what your animals were fed. It does matter whether they were given grains or not. Poultry are different. They can eat grains, um, but uh, you don't want them uh, with hormones and all kinds of chemicals. So pasture is the, the pasture poultry is the kind of the way I, I like people to go. Um, and essentially, if you really get down into the weeds with the grass-fed beef, it's a difference between how many omega-3s versus omega-6s are in those, those different types of meats. So, um, Couple of myths about fats. Let's talk about those. As I mentioned, some that I would want you to include if you're trying to lose weight, because when you eat those fats, let's say you add, uh, you have your salad with uh, some tuna fish, 
Uh, this is one of my get examples I give people that you can eat at a fast food restaurant. Go to Subway, tell them, I'd like the, uh, I'd like the salad. I don't want the bun. I don't want all the meat. I want a, a, a salad. They will chop up and tell them, put everything in it. They'll chop it all up in there, and I tell them, double tuna fish. Uh, and I'll often tell them, add olive oil and a little vinaigrette on top. So you're adding all these quality fats I just mentioned, um, and you get an unsweet tea. That is a perfectly uh, ketogenic, low-carb meal. It's not going to drive your blood sugars through the roof. It's not going to cause you to gain weight. But because you emphasize those quality fats, you will actually be less hungry. That's the, that's the magic when you add fats. I think I'll put a link at the end. My wife did a video um, on her webpage her on uh, – she called it Bulletproof Coffee, but Fatty Coffee. And she did a pretty good video of how she makes it and why she does it. What's interesting, when you add those fats, like let's say you put a little coconut oil in your coffee or some ghee or some butter, blend that up in the morning. It tastes like a latte, but what it actually does is it curbs your appetite. You are not hungry because your body goes, oh, that was fat. I'm, I'm good. I'm satisfied. If you have sugar cravings, add something similar. Add, you know, put some avocado in with your lunch. If you're just having something that's kind of light, that maybe, uh, and you stay away from the carbohydrates, you got a protein and some. You ask yourself, where's the fat? And when you start asking yourself, where are my good fats in this meal? Do I have enough of them? I'm kind of hungry. Think about quality fats. Okay, you can do this at barbecue restaurants. You can do this at uh, like Mexican restaurants, fajita plate or a taco salad. Just don't eat the crust. Don't eat all the chips. Tell them I want a taco salad, I want the vegetables, I want all the meat, uh, I'd like a little sour cream on top perhaps, and I want an extra side of guacamole. That's a higher quality fat. You're getting more quality fat in that meal. So these are the kind of things that I ask people to do when I'm trying to get them to lose weight, and it works. Okay. Sometimes we have to preempt these, these when they're trying to keep the, – when they get the carbs out, the first thing that happens is they start getting cravings. And I think that by adding the quality fats, that helps. I've also used it with diabetics, um, and it does help people get control of blood sugar. And I've seen them also be able to wean off of medications by keeping the simple sugars out and getting after, um, getting after the quality fats in the end of the diet. A couple of myths. Um, I'm not going to go into these, but I'm going to leave you some links to some videos with doctors that have explained this ad nauseum. Okay, it's my, I'm a practicing physician. I'm looking to find the best information I can for you and, and, and guide you into what I think is the best information. Because uh, you can read all kinds of stuff that says something different. But this, it, it, according to what I, can, what I can gather from the experts I follow, the advice I'm giving you is right. But one of the di uh, myths is that, dietarily speaking, if you, uh, you know, saturated fat is bad for you. Okay, it's going to make your cholesterol really high. Research has shown very clearly that that is not true for 75% of the population. There's about 25% of the population that do have an alteration in their cholesterol if they shift to a higher fat, lower carbohydrate diet, such as a ketogenic diet. 25% had a change. Dr. Volick, who I'll leave one of the, his videos in the closing, um, has explained that, yes, the LDL goes up, but LDL, the bad cholesterol, if you will, going up is often offset by good cholesterol and all other markers of inflammation that we worry about when you talk about heart disease and other inflammatory disorders like a CRP and homocysteine levels and all these other kind of interleukins and all the things that we identify that are associated with inflammation and heart disease. Those things tend to go away and get better even though the LDL went slightly up. He has a small video. I'll try to link in here. Uh, that if, for the for the you know those of you that want to kind of get into that geek out on that and and kind of read more, I think he does a great job of explaining that. Other myth myth number two that I, again I'm not going to defend. I don't think it's I don't I don't think I need to defend it. This is what I do every day with patients, and there's people that have already done this. And I'll list a few resources. Myth number two is eating fat makes you fat. That is not true. Did you know that 16,000 research articles regarding low uh, diet and low fat and versus high fat diets were studied by the Swedish government. They, they have decided that they would adopt essentially a ketogenic diet, a fat adapted diet as their national diet. That is 100% diabolically opposed to what the United States does. We tell everybody low fat, eat your grains, eat all your vegetables, 
and you know whatever you do don't eat any meat don't eat any fat because it's going to cause heart disease the problem is that there is so much research in a pretty smart country lots of good scientists and researchers from sweden have said no we think there's enough evidence that says that's absolutely not true and we're not going to be swayed by industry and things like that we're going to make this this is smarter if eating simple sugars causes people to have obesity diabetes and heart disease and it seems logical and all this research says that i think that's what we'll do as a national diet your takeaway should be that be careful of what you read be careful of everything being a fact i'm giving you a big interpretation of what i i believe to be true after years of doing this and actually doing this with patients and i'm with the swedes i think that they are they are right on the money and there's a lot of really smart researchers that says they are and that's why they've made it their national diet so just because the american diabetic association american heart association just because they have a differing opinion and a different dietary guideline be aware there is other research that says something very very opposite of that um, that happens to fit with my experience with patients but why there's so much uh, disagreement is simply because um, uh, there's there's so many there's so many industries involved there's there's so much there that um, uh, you know government entities and everything that's involved that have a say in what we tell people to eat and I think they're all meaning well uh, but but it, it's hard to ignore a lot of the evidence that's out there. I'm going to leave you with just a few key references. I want you to uh, I want you to remember a few things. I'm going to post these. I'll list these. The first one is examples of good fat. This is something I've written. I'll post it um, to the bottom of this tab here. Um, that article just kind of goes into more detail about the quality fats I mentioned to you. The next one I'm going to list is um, Dr. Volick. Um, Dr. Volick's video, he's a little technical, but if you want to hear from one of the guys that's doing the leading edge research with athletes, on uh, ketogenic adapted, fat adapted athletes, on um, all, you know, all things low carb, if you will, that's what you, you want to look at his. It's about an hour long video, but it's worth a watch for those of you that want it, you know, more information. Uh, the, la the next one is Nina Tickholz, um, the big fat surprise. Um, Nina is an investigative journalist, um, wrote a book on all the controversy around uh, fats in the human diet. If you want the Bible, uh, as far as I'm concerned, of current evidence and uh, well thought out arguments for and against uh, fats in the diet, uh, that's a great audio book or uh, book for, to, to sit down and read. Um, so I would, I would throw that one in there as well as a recommendation for those of you who are interested. Don't just take my word for it. And then, like I said, if you're interested in kind of lower carbohydrate, uh, uh, high fat uh, type um, meal options and, and uh, things like that, um, check out uh, Small Kitchen to You, uh, which is a website that my wife um, handles. And uh, she does a great job with exploring nutritional and uh, cooking related uh, activities. So um, that they're specific to this type of dieting. So, I hope this has been helpful for you. It's been a little longer than I thought it would be, but this is a topic that comes up so often. If you have somebody that you've been debating, you know, uh, fats and, you know, different macros and things with, have them take a look at this video, but also share with them some of the videos that I listed at the end here and some of the links, because I think they're real important. So anyway, I hope that's, uh, if you have any questions, I'll uh, follow this. I'll answer as many as I can, um, and I'll sign off for now, and uh, we'll, um, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that come up. Take care.